What you're hearing from people who move here is I have to wait too long for food, or I had to wait in line for service, or there's somebody, there wasn't someone at the counter when I got there. And I think all of that is a function of people can't find places to live close enough to where they work. Do you think that we're doing enough as a whole to address this problem? No. Um, we need to do more. Help wanted signs or closed signs are not hard to find in St. Augustine, Florida. The reason why can be traced back to something that is hard to find, affordable housing. One in four Americans are considered house poor. That means they're spending too much of their monthly income on a place to live. If you're spending more than 30% of your income on housing monthly, you're considered house poor too. Let's focus on Jacksonville, Florida, which is just 30 miles north of St. Augustine, where the median household income is around $70,000. Let's say that's your annual salary. That means ideally you shouldn't be spending more than $1,750 monthly on a place to live. Now let's take a bigger look at the problem and possible solutions to the affordable housing crisis. We traveled to Gainesville to learn more. So if somebody has become established, they've lived in the state a long time, they would, I think, be really surprised to try and go out on the market now and rent an apartment or buy a home. It's become much more expensive. I'm Ann Ray. I'm with the Schimberg Center for Housing Studies at University of Florida. Ann's research has found that Florida has a severe affordable housing deficit. For every 100 households whose income is less than 30% of the area's median income, there are only 26 affordable, and available rental units. So when households, especially lower income households, are paying more for their, than that for their housing, it can have some really negative effects. You have to pay your rent or your mortgage every month in full, right? So people start to skimp on other basic needs, food, health care, transportation, clothing. And in the worst cases, if they lose their housing, they can become homeless or, or more often forced to double up with other people, and that's a strain. So what is the solution to bringing more affordable housing to Florida. There's really a couple things that we need to do to address the affordable housing problem, and it's a long, slow process, but it works. One is to increase the supply of affordable housing, particularly housing that people working in service jobs, you know, leisure, accommodation, tourism. And the other thing is to ensure that households who might be struggling with their housing costs or who already have found affordable housing but are in a rough patch have support so they can stay in their homes. That's easier said than done, but some groups are already working to solve the affordable housing crisis. I'm Bill Lazar, the executive director of the St. John's Housing Partnership. The housing partnership is involved in several different aspects of affordable housing. While the lack of affordable housing is not a unique problem to any one Florida community, in St. John's County, the problem is especially prevalent. Homes are selling at a median price of $495,000, and only 3% of available rental units are priced between $1,000 and $1,500, according to the St. Johns County Chamber. The average teacher would need to earn more than three times their current wage to afford a home at the current median sale price. It's a big reason why the St. Johns Housing Partnership is trying to increase the area's affordable housing stock. So we have a program where we both build homes for sale to first time home buyers and we're slowly building some additional rental property which seems to be at a premium these days in St. Augustine in particular. So you're going to show us that today? Yep, we're going to go to uh, two duplexes that we're currently building. They're about three quarters complete. These are the duplexes that we're building. This was actually another single family lot that we bought about a year and a half ago. The county helped us purchase it. These will be four three bedroom, one bath units. If we just literally advertise it on the open market as we have a rental for somebody who must income qualify, we'll get no less than 50 calls in a day. Yeah, because yeah, the, the demand is high. It's huge. When people talk about affordable housing, the, the most critical part of it is it's what the monthly housing payment is. Doesn't matter what it costs to build it, doesn't matter what it costs if you're gonna sell it, but it's what is that relationship between the monthly payment and your gross household income. A beautiful open space when you walk in. My name is Marley Tompkins. Um, I am a first time home buyer. I have two beautiful uh, daughters. 
I'm born and raised here in St. Augustine. This house will soon be home to Marley and her two daughters who were almost priced out of St. Augustine. The housing partnership helped her buy this home. I would have to live with um, family members or other people because it's so high and I'm paying all the bills myself with two, two children. Knowing that affordable housing is such a struggle for so many people to find right now, I mean, how grateful are you feeling to be here? Like, words can't even describe how this feels. Marley is not alone in her struggles either. We asked our viewers if they were struggling to find affordable housing and got hundreds of responses. The stories are sadly similar. Across Jacksonville, across Northeast Florida, we have people with full-time jobs that are essential jobs. We need them in our communities. They might be working for the sheriff's office or the school district or the hospital, and they're the support staff we need in those professions to make our community function, and they can't afford to live here. I am Shannon Nasworth. I'm the president and CEO of Ability Housing. We are a Jacksonville-based nonprofit that develops affordable rental housing. Honestly, we all need to make sure our neighbors can afford their housing because if we live in a community where only certain income ranges have a place they can afford to live, then all of the professions that they rely upon for a quality community will not be able to work there. They're going to live somewhere else. Ability Housing is another nonprofit working to solve the affordable housing crisis. With 11 income capped properties in Duval, Orange and Osceola counties, they've helped hundreds of families find a reasonably priced, safe place to live. Four more properties are in development, including in St. John's. I can tell you that every day, we are very proud that we know that almost a thousand households have a roof over their head because of Ability Housing. And while we're not gonna solve the problem for everyone, for those thousand households, we've solved that problem. Is this a solution that can be adapted and can work in different communities? Absolutely. This is something every community should be investing in. And it's something that unfortunately sometimes our neighbors come out and don't want to have happen. There are preconceived notions when you say affordable housing. They don't want those people living in, near them in their neighborhood. They, you know, they'll talk about crime, they'll talk about property values, they'll talk about, well, and honestly now what they'll come out and talk about is traffic congestion and school capacity. So the need is great. But it's also something we can tackle. I want to remind people that we didn't always have an affordable housing crisis. There was a time in our society when we didn't have systemic homelessness. Um, the reason we have so many people who are challenged at, with housing instability um, and the reason why we have an affordable housing crisis is we stopped investing in affordable housing. There's no one-size-fits-all solution to this problem. Government programs can help, offering funding towards down payment assistance and to build more affordable housing options. Offering builders or developers workforce housing incentives or density bonus incentives is another way to solve this problem. Problem. Palm Beach County and the City of St. Petersburg are already implementing similar incentives for builders in their community. St. John's County is also trying to build dedicated workforce housing. Meanwhile, there are hundreds of thousands of people on waiting lists across the state for affordable housing. This is a problem that won't be solved overnight. For Solutionaries, I'm Tiffany Salome. Be sure to subscribe to Solutionaries to see all our latest videos right here on YouTube.